Hi guys, this is Noah with NYPC IT, your managed service provider. Today I'm going to do a video on a new security feature that we uh, have launched this year. And it's very exciting. It is a newer and upcoming uh, type of security and the feature is called EDR and that stands for Endpoint Detection and Response uh, or it could also be known as ETDR so Endpoint Threat Detection and Response uh, so what this does it continuously monitors and collects data from your computers and analyzes that data to figure out whether it is a suspicious activity, a good activity, uh, or you know make a decision on what to do, or contact the technician. So the primary functions of it is to monitor and collect uh, activity data from your computers, and then the program analyzes that data to see if it can identify threats and after that it will either automatically respond you know to that threat so if it figured out and identified it as something bad then it will block it or do what it can if it cannot come to a decision on what it does or what it is then it will notify us your IT provider and we can take action uh, so the last step was, is us as a human being. We do the forensic and analysis side uh, to research and identify the threat. So what we are going to do is uh, just briefly go through uh, the program. So if we see this is the incident section in our security console uh, as you can see there are a few different uh, companies that are showing some malware and ransomware so for me the biggest one is the ransomware and we have already done investigating uh, and have found that it was not a threat but for the purpose of this video we're going to go ahead and dive into this uh, threat and show you how it works so EDR what happened it saw a program on the computer doing something kind of funny now the program is called search protocol host extremely boring you have no clue what it is uh, you know it's really not so important the important step is that the security program said hey this little search protocol host.exe has renamed a file to zzzzz.zzz right and this is a common thing that ransomware does to try and encrypt your data uh, or block access, you know, etc. Now, inside the console, you could see here that this is the program it, it started tracking. And from here, it says that it renamed a couple different files, which it thought, you know, was kind of odd. And it was continuing to. Uh, search it but what happened is the software kind of just went hmm this is suspicious it's not enough for us to block it and it's also not enough for us to know what to do with it uh, so what we do on our side is go and research these files that the security program is telling us it does not know what to do with it or that it is a suspicious uh, file right so it's saying this particular file here has you know been detected as suspicious that it can be used for things like uh, 
credential dumping and getting into Windows shares. So, in other words, it's a bad, you know, it could be a bad piece of malware uh, that will destroy data and just try and get around the network and, you know, eventually take over other uh, computers as well. So, upon further investigation on our end, we found out this is something that came from an email and nothing bad actually ran uh, and we did go ahead and get rid of these files that were suspicious so we did further investigating on these files and they came up to be clean so I'm going to go over another one that the EDR software detected as malware. So it's in a category, you know, see how it's red? So it thinks that this is something uh, really bad. So this is a fun one, and it's actually what's called a false positive in this case so our security software said hey we have blocked an odd website that seemed like it was trying to do a sort of network attack right now upon further investigation so as we opened up our ticket we see that here's the original the originating computer and this was the threat that was blocked now the threat that was blocked is a website so it's saying that you know it's not exactly sure what this is doing or what it is it just has some odd uh, characteristics for that website so I immediately uh, started to investigate this website and found out that the user who was using this computer was visiting a camera system at an off-site location now while that's nothing malicious how are we supposed to know right that it is nothing malicious because it could be a website that is bad and actually camera systems can be compromised to where they can steal information or even uh, implant viruses into your computer if they have been taken over and tampered with and a lot of camera systems the way that they are designed they are not uh, signed so to say by larger companies for approval so what that means is that their software development team will design a camera system and it's you know up to their specs but a company like Microsoft hasn't signed off on it saying that everything is legitimate and you know no malicious action etc etc so after further investigation on this particular threat we found out it was just a camera system the employee was checking in on uh, you know an office off-site that she's helping out with and from there we we contacted the owner we let him know hey uh, this person is you know going to the site and looking at cameras and it's eating up bandwidth etc etc and the owner said to us it's okay you know if it's not doing anything malicious go ahead and allow it and so that was what uh, we did. We went ahead and allowed uh, that website. So actually for this what I am going to do is mark it as a false positive. Right? Because it's not bad. And we have already added the website so this website that's you know being blocked to the okay list that it's okay 
uh, to to go ahead and do. Now, here are a couple of incidents on my internal uh, company, and there's two different ones. And one of them is a computer tool that we used to use in the past that is now associated with malware. So over time, tools that might have used to be used in the past can sometimes be marked as malicious because they can do uh, administrative types of uh, functions such as the things here that it's explaining. So even though this is a, a tool that can be used for good, the program is also saying that, hey, you know, this can be used for this whole list of, you know, exfiltration, right? So here's a whole list of executions that that particular tool uh, can do. Now, if you ask me if this tool is in the hands of the wrong person on a network, it can be very bad. Uh, you know, they might be able to make system changes to the computer or implant some type of malware or spying software. Uh, or, you know, it might just be being used by the technician for legitimate act uh, actions. In our case, that's actually what it was. Uh, but for us, this is a tool that we don't use anymore and haven't used in a long time. Uh, and when it does a analysis of the tool, it's saying that it is bad and that's not a tool you want to be using. So here, the program does a sandbox analysis. Now what that means is the security program took this threat and ran it in a sandbox and what that means is that it puts a barrier around that program and temporarily runs it and it tracks and collects information on what it does so as that example I'm gonna break it down okay so here's my computer this is the process that originally uh, was tied to these other functions. Okay. And here are other functions that are being done. and it goes through what has been ran or what might have been renamed or deleted or etc cetera, etc cetera. now if we go through the analysis of this tool here so I'm going to view the report it does indeed say this is a somewhat malicious program and needs to be you know taken care of so what we're going to do is make sure that it's been disinfected and it has so it's been disinfected and then added you know the file to the quarantine now also on my end I have the ability to say block this process on all policies. Now what that means on the back end, the policies are uh, information that controls the software for your company. So I have you know policies for all of my different companies that I help out. And what that just said is that it's going to add a block list to everybody's you know policy to block this program system explorer if it ends up on one of their computers as well 
So right when it's, you know, either been downloaded or seen or put on the computer, I mean, even before it's ran, right, it's going to automatically see it and go, nope, I don't like you, and pull it out of your computer. Uh, it's really quite special. So I'm going to go ahead and close that particular incident. Now, here's another uh, one that I would like to talk about as well. So this one is interesting because it's picking up a program and it thinks that program is bad and doing something odd and there are programs with a similar name and does similar things that can be malicious right now after my investigation I've been able to tell that this is a legitimate program doing a legitimate action it just looks a little weird it's making a administrative change to the computer uh, in the background which if was you know done wrongfully or done in a malicious uh, manner could be very bad in this particular instance though what it was is my server pushing an update to the computer uh, and making a change to my computer and it thought that the program doing it was no good now as I did further investigation so I can do a sandbox report and a virus total report so virus total is a very good tool I have I recommend using it. Uh, it it has over 69 security companies that will scan that file. So 69 companies have come back and said that program looks safe. And that is actually two different reports. So here is another report and this report is also saying there is no threat detected in this program so what we could do is add file as an exception if I wanted to just allow audit pulled.exe to always run I'm not going to do that though because remember audit poll.exe could be used as something bad even though it is a legitimate tool it could be potentially used for a security breach in this instance it was not I did my investigation it was the server pushing something to the workstation which updated a setting on the machine which was non malicious right so in this instance I'm going to close and actually put some notes as well so I will quickly put in here saying that audit poll is a legitimate tool you know that can be used for malware so I'm just saying uh, what I have found it's a legitimate tool it could be used for malware in this case the server just pushed an update to the computer that made a system change uh, no threat is active and from here I will say close okay now I'm going to hop back here 
uh, to the incident section. So the incident section is where it gives lower categoried items. You know that it it really cannot decide and wants us uh, to decide. So here's an incident saying, hey, there's a tool on here uh, that could do these following things. Now, I recognize what that tool is. I know it is a healthy tool. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say everybody can use it. That, you know, nobody block it and nobody's companies. And the reason for that, uh, the tool Gping, it's a tool I use pretty often, uh, and I need it to not be blocked. So if we just go through another one here, oh, here's another program that it's saying we don't exactly know what this tool does it could be used you know as something bad I know what it is um, we've investigated it it's nothing uh, bad so what we could do is add the file as an exception and what that does is say hey if this tool runs anywhere it's okay now we don't you know think uh, that it's bad enough to block so that is a quick overview of the EDR function so the endpoint detection and response and how it monitors and collects data from the computers to analyze and identify threats and if it can automatically respond to that threat it will by you know removing it or containing it or if it does not know like in this case so these items that are here it alerts us and it is up to us as your IT provider to investigate that threat and keep you safe. If you have any questions or would like to make sure that this new EDR feature is fully functional in your business, please give me a call or shoot me an email. The store number is 888-616-6972 or you could send an email to sales at NYPC dot it thank you for watching this video and i hope it was very educational have a great day